we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, I think I know everybody, but I can no longer see who's logging in. So in case we have some new faces, my name is Zach Lasker. Um, I had the honor of being the executive director of Open Temple and welcome to Open Temple's virtual yoga studio. Um, and I am the resident yoga instructor. It's good to see you. Shabbat Shalom, good morning, good afternoon. In terms of props for today, I wanna to recommend that you have access to at least one um, block or thick hardcover book. You'll want a strap, a rope, a belt, um, be creative, be adaptive, um, anything that you find in your house like this. Um, you can have access to a pillow for the end of our practice. And then I have waiting for me over there, a folding chair which is gonna be a really helpful prop as we get deeper into our practice and approach our peak pose for the day. So with all of those props assembled, the most important thing to bring is yourself. So take a seat on the mat. Let's just take a couple of breaths before we really get into this. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. And inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. You can do that a couple more times. The inhale draws breath, air, oxygen in through your nose, down your throat, into your chest down into your belly, giving you energy, expanding your body. And your exhale is a release, not just of the breath, but of the clutter that fogs your mind. You have a whole day or most of the day ahead of you there's more to the weekend. So push everything else to the side so that you can be here and now. Take another inhale and exhale. So as most, if not all of you know, we have been dedicating our practice ever since the start of January, 2021 to the Jewish tradition of Musar. Musar is an idea that each one of us embodies a set of soul traits. And if we can focus our mind and our attention on one trait at a time and really live in it, reflect on it, refine it, that we have a better chance of walking a path, a life journey towards ethical behavior, towards mensch-like existence. And we have covered so many of these soul traits. We've looked at loving kindness and equanimity. We've looked at patience and humility. We've looked at order. We've looked at trust and faith and truth. And today is our culminating practice um, with this exploration of Musar. And we have arrived at the one trait that is not easily definable in English. And the trait is the Hebrew word yira. And yira actually has two definitions, which may seem quite different one from the other, but which I think we'll come to see have an interesting connection. And those definitions are fear and awe. So one of the things we are going to be exploring today is the relationship between fear and awe and how ultimately they can combine to lift us up, to make us better people. So we are gonna begin. The disclaimer I typically offer is that you are the master of your practice. I am here simply to offer suggestions. If at any point I offer a suggestion which makes you feel physically unsafe or in pain, then you are in the driver's seat to back off, come into a previous pose, take a rest, come into child's pose, do what you need to do to keep yourself safe. That's really critically important. 
Please lie down on your back. Extend your legs forward towards the front of the room. Rest your arms alongside your torso, palms facing up. Let your ankles roll open. And let's resume that slow and steady cycle of breath that we started to cultivate just a couple of minutes ago. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. And inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Do that another couple of times. And draw your knees into your chest. Interlace your fingers around your right knee, extend your left leg forward, lower onto your left heel, and inhale to draw your right knee closer into your chest. And as you exhale, lengthen out of your left leg towards the front of the room. I'm gonna do that two more times. Inhale, draw your right knee closer to your right armpit. And exhale as you shoot out your left leg through your left foot to the front of the room. One more inhale as you draw your right knee even closer to that armpit. And exhale, stamp your left foot onto the wall in front of you. And now bend your left knee and plant your left foot on the floor. Release the interlace from your right knee. Take your rope, belt, or strap, make a loop out of it around the ball of your right foot and start to lengthen your right leg and foot up towards the ceiling. Draw your left knee in to the midline and energetically shoot your right leg up. Imagine that your right foot could go through your roof and touch the sky. I didn't see where Ted and Michelle are today. Sometimes they're outside, so maybe their feet are literally pointing up towards the sky. I love when they practice outside. Keep your shoulder blades melted onto the ground. And if you want to deepen this pose, Lengthen your left leg towards the front of the room. Stay on your left heel. Flex your left foot so that your toes point up towards the ceiling. Rotate your inner left leg down towards the ground. And now take both ends of the strap in your right hand. Extend your right foot and leg out to the right. Bend your right elbow, lower your upper right arm onto the ground and turn your gaze out to the left. Left arm out to the left. We'll be here just three cycles of breath, opening up your right hip, but really working on the length of your right leg and left leg. One more inhale. And as you exhale, draw your right foot back up towards the ceiling. Take your left hand on the left side of the strap and then bend your left knee, plant your left foot on the ground if your left leg was straight and bend your right knee, remove the strap, lower your right foot onto the ground, put the strap off to the side for a moment and then inhale as you draw your right knee into your chest. And as you exhale, lengthen your right leg out to the front of the room. Inhale, draw your left knee to your left armpit. 
and exhale, imagine that you could stamp your right foot on the wall in front of you. Let's do one more inhale as your left knee comes in even closer. And exhale, shoot that right leg and foot to the front of the room. And then bend your right knee and plant your right foot on the ground. Release the interlace of your fingers from around your left knee. Take your strap, loop it over the ball of your left foot and lengthen your left leg and foot up towards the ceiling. Keep your shoulders planted on the ground. And notice if your right knee is leaning out to the right side of the room, draw it into the midline. Take another inhale and exhale. And if you want to deepen the intensity, start to straighten your right leg back towards the front of the room. Stay on your right heel. Flex your right foot so the toes point up. And then take both ends of the strap in your left hand. Draw your left foot and leg over to the left side of the room as you turn your gaze over to the right and extend your right arm out to the right. And rotate your inner right thigh down to the ground. Notice that that helps you to straighten your right leg. Take two more cycles of breath. Inhaling through your nose. And exhaling out your mouth. One more cycle. And then inhale, draw your left foot and leg back up towards the ceiling, right hand on the right edge of the strap. Bend your right knee, plant your right foot, and then bend your left knee, remove the strap, you could put the strap all the way off to the side, draw your knees into your chest, and then just rock from right to left and left to right, massaging your lower back. And then the next time your knees are falling towards the right, let them fall all the way over to the right side of the room. Come on to the right side of your torso, pause for a moment. And then using your left hand, press into the ground and push yourself up into a seated position. And you can decide if you want to sit in Sukhasana, where one shin is in front of the other, or this will better prepare you for some of the poses coming up. You can join me in Virasana. To come into Virasana, sit up on your knees for a moment, take a block or a book, place it between your ankles, hug it in with your ankles, and then sit down on the block or book. That's hero's pose. And if you're in hero's pose, take your hands, grab onto your left thigh and rotate your left thigh in and down. And then do the same thing with your left thigh, in and down. So whether you're in Sukhasana with your shins crossed or in hero's pose, where your knees are bent and you're sitting up on the block, hands out to the side, palms face out, inhale, lift your arms up, and exhale, arms come down. Palms face out. Inhale, arms come up. And then take your right hand, grab onto your left wrist, rotate your left wrist and hand over to the right, turn your gaze up to the left, and inhale, and exhale. And explore the length of the left side of your body from your left hip up to your left shoulder and your left shoulder shooting out your left arm and left hand. 
Take one more inhale. And exhale, relief, release your left wrist, arms float up, and exhale, arms come down. Second side, inhale, arms float up. This time, use your left hand to grab onto your right wrist. Draw your right wrist and hand over to the left. Turn your gaze up to the right. Three cycles of breath. Inhale. And exhale. And this time, explore the length of the right side of your body. From your right hip to your right shoulder, and then your right shoulder shooting out your right arm and hand. Take one more inhale. And exhale, release your hand, arms straighten up, and exhale, arms float down. Great job. Hands on top of your knees, palms facing up. You can let your eyes close or keep them open. And if you're sitting in Sukhasana with your shins crossed, Please switch the crossing of your shins. And I want to invite you to turn your gaze in and let your mind settle on a magical, wondrous sight of the world. I'll offer you mine. You can choose it or choose a different location. To me, one of the most awesome places on the world is Iguazu Falls. These magical, mystical waterfalls that are right on the edge of Argentina and Brazil. Some of these waterfalls stretch up 230 to 260 feet high. And they're a combination of hundreds of waterfalls. And I was blessed to have the opportunity to go and visit them. And if you can imagine, imagine being in a canoe or on a boat in the midst of all of these very tall, high, flowing rapids and waterfalls. And as you might be able to imagine, on the one hand, a sight like that triggers a little bit of fear. The stakes are extremely high, no pun intended. The water can be more powerful than certainly I am as a swimmer. And whatever you have chosen as your site, you can't deny that there are these risks of nature. And on the other hand, if you have the mental and soulful ability to calm those waters, to refine your sight. At Iguazu Falls, you can look up and see an array of rainbows. You can see the grandeur of this water. You can take in this perfectly natural, wondrous sight that pretty much eliminates this idea of borders between different countries and get a sense for the wholeness and unity of the world. For me, Iguazu Falls is definitely a site of fear and awe. And the challenge before us is how can you acknowledge the fear, can't eliminate it, would be quite naive and unsafe to not acknowledge that there, there is risk there. But can you also take a step back and with a sense of mindfulness, put on a different set of lenses to recognize the majesty, the wonder, 
the awesomeness of that type of context. That's part of what we are here today to explore in our practice and carry with us in our souls off this mat. Inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. If your eyes were closed, let your eyes flutter open and come out of Sukhasana or Virasana. Come into a tabletop position. Root your hands into the mat. Stack your shoulders on top of your wrists. Spread your fingers, index fingers point towards the top of the mat, hips above your knees, and inhale, reach your heart and chest forward and up, arch your back, lift your tush up as you come into your first cow position, and exhale, round your back, come into a cat position. Inhale into cow, and exhale into cat. Inhale into cow. And exhale into cat. Return to a tabletop position with your back in its neutral state. Inhale, reach your right leg back, lower onto your right toes, press back through your right heel, lengthen that right leg. A lot of what we're going to be doing today is about lengthening, stretching, strengthening your legs. And then with your next exhale, bend your right knee and right knee parallel to your left knee. Second side, inhale, reach your left leg back, lower onto your left toes and press back through your left heel to the back of the room. Igniting some of that energy, some of the physicality in that left leg. Really press that left heel back. And with your next exhale, bend your left knee, left knee parallel to your right knee. We're going to start to build on. And as those of you who practice with me regularly know, I'm going to build on the intensity, but you decide when you hit your limit. And remember that a little bit of heat is a very good and healthy thing. Inhale, right leg back. This time, keep your right leg parallel to the ground, but similar action, press back through that right heel towards the back of the room. Engage your core, draw your belly in, turn your stomach muscles on, keep your gaze down on the ground, lengthen further through that right leg to the back of the room. And then with your next exhale, Bend your right knee, right knee parallel to your left knee. Inhale, left leg up and back. This time, stamp your left foot onto the wall in back of you. And give yourself a slight adjustment. Rotate your inner left thigh up towards the ceiling. Your left foot is flexed so that your left toes point down towards the ground. One more inhale. And exhale, bend your left knee, left knee parallel with right knee. Adding on, inhale, right leg up and back, and pause, engage your core, and then inhale, left arm floats up and towards the front of the room. So stretch yourself in opposing directions. Use the inhale to stretch your right leg back, and the exhale to lengthen the left side of your body, which enables you to reach your left arm further towards the front of the room. One more inhale. And exhale, lower your left hand, lower your right knee. Second side, inhale, left leg up and back. Engage your core. And then inhale, right arm up and forward, palm faces in towards the midline. Inhale, stretches your left leg further towards the back of the room. 
and inhale, lengthen the right side of your torso, which pushes your right arm further towards the front of the room. Engage that core to keep a sense of stability and then lower your right hand and lower your left knee. You're doing great. We're gonna add on one more time. Inhale, right leg up and back and exhale. Inhale, left arm up and forward and exhale. And then inhale, bend your right knee, bend your left elbow. They meet in the center of your belly and inhale, expand out. Inhale, draw in. Exhale, expand out. Inhale, right knee and left elbow meet in the center of your belly. Exhale, extend. One more time, inhale. And exhale, expand out. And then lower your left palm, lower your right knee. One more round, last side. Inhale, left leg up and back and exhale. Inhale, right arm up and forward and exhale. And then this tricky cat cow, inhale, right elbow, left knee, meet in the center of your chest, round your back, exhale, extend out. Inhale, draw in, round your back. Exhale, extend out. Three more times. Inhale, come in. Exhale, extend out. Two more. Inhale. And exhale. Last one. Inhale. And exhale. Right hand down. Left knee down. Bring your big toes to touch. Widen your knees. Shift your hips back. Nestle your torso between your thighs, walk your hands forward, and then bend your elbows and release your forearms onto the ground. And find yourself in your first Balasana child's pose. So I wanna right away offer an idea about this concept of gira as fear. Fear of what? So in the Jewish tradition of Musar, these soul traits are ultimately connected to God and how we relate to God. And so one of the possibilities is certainly that part of the fear is of our mistakes, our errors, our sins and how they might come under judgment. But there is a Musar teacher that offers a slightly different angle on this idea of fear. That it is not fear of punishment of our sins, but rather fear of not living up to our spiritual potential. So those of you who have been practicing regularly, it's the fear of not showing up with these soul traits in the best strength and position possible. That's one idea. Take another couple cycles of breath and then pass forward through a tabletop position, tuck your toes, lift your hips up and back, Spin your inner thighs towards the back of the room and reach your heels towards the sides of the mat. That's gonna help emphasize this action of spinning your inner thighs back. Couple more cycles of breath in this Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Come up onto your toes. Bring your heels in again so that they're parallel with each other. And then keep your hips up as you start to lower your heels down. One more inhale. And exhale. 
Inhale, come forward into plank position. You can immediately modify by lowering your knees on the mat. And exhale, Adho Mukha Shanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward into plank. Stop when your shoulders are above your wrists. And exhale, up and back, Adho Mukha Shanasana. One more time. Inhale, come forward into plank. Bend your knees, lower them onto the ground. Lower your chin onto the ground. Lower your chest onto the ground. And then slide your knees back and find yourself on your belly. Untuck your toes. Walk your hands back so that they're by your upper ribs. Draw your elbows into your torso. Press your palms into the ground. And inhale to lift your heart and chest up into Bhujangasana, low cobra. Keep your gaze on the ground and exhale, lower down. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, lift up into Bhujangasana and exhale, lower down. Extend your arms towards the back of the room, palms face in. And then inhale, lift your chin and chest up. Lift your feet up. Lift your arms up. Draw your shoulder blades together and spread your collarbones. You're in Shalabhasana, locust pose. One more inhale. And exhale, release, lower down. Let's do that again. Inhale, lift your heart up, chest up, lift your feet up, spin your inner thighs up towards the ceiling, lift your arms up, and inhale, and exhale, lower down. Great job. Bring your forearms in front of you, bend your elbows, lift your heart and chest up, Come into Sphinx Pose. Draw your shoulder blades together. Lengthen your legs back. In fact, lift your right leg up, your right foot up, and reach your right leg towards the back of the room. Feel it grow longer. And then lower your right foot down. Now lift your left foot and leg up. Reach your left leg back and lower your left foot down. Let's take another cycle of breath in your Sphinx pose. And then lower your chest down. Press your palms into the mat by your upper ribs. Fingertips face forward. Draw your elbows in. Tuck your toes. Push yourself up onto your knees. And then right away, lift your hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. And then inhale, turn your gaze up between your hands. Start to walk your feet forward until you find yourself in Uttanasana in a forward fold. Hands float up to your hips, elbows draw in, and then slowly start to lift your torso up one vertebra at a time. Keep your gaze down until you're standing up straight. And then you can lift your gaze up, release your hands from your hips, step your feet together, big toes touch, heels a couple of inches apart, Find yourself in Tadasana, in mountain pose. Let's do a few half sun salutations. Inhale, arms float up. Uttita Hastasana. Exhale, folding forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana. Root into your feet, rise up, arms up. 
And exhale, arms come back down into Tadasana, into mountain pose. Inhale, Uttita Hastasana, arms float up. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold, dive forward. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, come halfway up, flatten your back. Exhale, back into Uttanasana, your forward fold. Inhale, root into your feet. Uttita Sasana, torso comes up, arms float up. Exhale, Tadasana, arms come down. One more time. Inhale. And exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms float down. Stand in Tadasana. Pause for just a moment. I want to share a quick story with you about this spin on fear that I just brought up. There's a very famous story about Reb Zusha a very learned man who unfortunately is lying ill on his deathbed and his students gather around him and he seems quite agitated. And they say, Reb Susha, you know, what, what's wrong? Don't worry, your, your place in heaven is pretty much guaranteed. You've, you've led this amazing, generous, wise, modest lifestyle. And he says, I'm worried. And they say, what are you worried about? And he says, I'm worried that when I arrive to heaven, they're not going to ask me, why weren't you more like Moses? Why weren't you more like Miriam? Why weren't you more like Abraham? Why weren't you more like Ruth? I'm worried that I'm going to be asked, why weren't you more like Zusha? And it connects to this idea that the fear, the worry, is to miss our own spiritual, social, emotional, intellectual potential, which is distinctly unique for each one of us. So as we flow through our practice, try to keep your mind calm so that fear doesn't keep you from moving forward towards your own potential. Let's flow through Surya Namaskar C, Sun Salutation C. Inhale, arms float up, exhale, folding forward, inhale, come halfway up, exhale, folding forward, bend your knees, flatten your palms, inhale, step your left leg back, lower onto your left knee, untuck your left toes, inhale, torso floats up, and then exhale, lower your hands, straighten your right leg, shift your hips back, come onto your right heel, flex your right foot so that your right toes point up. We're in a version of Hanumanasana. So I forecasted that we were going to be working throughout the day on straightening our legs. And here's a good opportunity to do so. You might feel the sensation in your right hand string. Take one more inhale. Exhale, bend your right knee, walk your hands forward, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, flatten your palms, step your right leg back into plank position. And you can decide to either take the vinyasa, come into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog, or always have the opportunity to take a break in balasana in child's pose, I'm going to demonstrate taking the vinyasa. I'm going to shift my torso forward, bend my elbows and lower halfway down, roll over my toes into Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, upward facing dog, and then tuck my toes, shift my hips up and back, downward facing dog. And then inhale, step your right leg forward. This time, 
uh, excuse me, step your left leg forward, lower onto your right knee, untuck your right toes, inhale, torso and arms float up, bend into your left knee, exhale, lower your hands down to frame your front foot, and then shift your hips back as you straighten your left leg, come onto your left heel, flex your left foot, left toes point up, keep your hips aligned towards the front of the room. Gonna be here for a few cycles of breath. You might notice a sensation on the back of your left leg. One more inhale. And then exhale, bend back into your left knee. Palms press into the mat on each side of your left foot. Tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, and then step your right foot forward to meet your left foot. You're in Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale into Ardha Uttanasana, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, lower your arms down into Tadasana, mountain pose. We're gonna do one more Surya Namaskar C. Inhale, arms float up. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your left leg back this time. Lower onto your left knee, untuck your left toes. Inhale, float your torso and arms up as you bend deeper into your right knee. Exhale, lower your hands down. Take your right hand inside your right foot and you can heel toe your right foot out towards the right edge of the mat. And then lower down onto your forearms. And if this is too hard, this is inaccessible, place blocks underneath your forearms. You're coming into lizard pose. Keep your right knee in towards the midline. Don't let your right knee flop open. And if you want to deepen the sensation of this pose, you can tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, and press your left heel towards the back of the room. We're gonna be here for three more cycles of breath. Inhale, and exhale. And inhale, and exhale. One more inhale. Exhale, bend your left knee, lower it down. If it was up, untuck your left toes. Walk your hands back in, come onto your hands. And then tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, step your right leg back, find yourself in plank position. Take the vinyasa or meet in downward facing dog. Balasana, child's pose is always an option. And then inhale, step your left foot forward, lower onto your right knee. Inhale, torso and arms float up, Anjane Asana. Exhale, lower your hands down. This time, take your left hand inside your left foot, heel toe your left foot out towards the left side of the mat. And then bend your elbows, come onto your forearms, or you can rest your forearms onto a block. Keep your left knee hugging in towards the center of the mat. You're in lizard pose. Those of you that want to deepen the stretch, tuck your right toes and lift your right knee up and press back through your right heel. Three cycles of breath, inhale, and exhale. Inhale, exhale, 
One more inhale. And as you exhale, if your right knee is up, lower it down, walk your hands in. So come up onto your hands, straighten your arms, and then everyone tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, step your right foot forward, find yourself in Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale to come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms float down. And pause for a moment in Tadasana, in mountain pose. Let your eyes close. Let your heartbeat settle back in. And I want to shift for a moment to this other dimension of Yura. We talked about Yura as fear. And I want to explore it now as awe. Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel shares the following. The meaning of awe is to realize that life takes place under wider horizons, horizons that range beyond the span of an individual life or even the life of a nation, a generation, or an era. Awe enables us to perceive in the world intimations of the divine, to sense in small things the beginning of infinite significance, to sense the ultimate in the simple, to feel in the rush of the passing, the stillness of the eternal. I think that is so magnificent. This ability to see wider horizons, to see beyond ourselves, to perceive of a world that's larger than any one of us. And that's particularly a challenge in these moments when we're confronting with that expansiveness, which can be a little bit frightening and intimidating. But how can we push past that to see the awe? Step your feet together in the center of your mat, the horizontal way. And then step your feet about three and a half to four feet apart. Turn your toes in, your heels out, hands on your hips, elbows reach back in towards each other. Inhale, lift your torso and heart up, and then exhale, fold forward, hinge at your hips. When your torso is halfway down, release your hands from your hips, come onto your fingertips, if the floor is out of reach, widen your stance, flatten your palms, walk your hands back so that your fingers are aligned with your big toes. Prasarita Padottanasana. Distribute the weight of your body evenly in your feet. So don't lean too far forward, don't lean too far back. Really center the weight of your body in the middle of your feet. Couple more cycles of breath. Notice that lengthening, that expansion of your legs. And then hands rise back up to your hips and inhale, come back up. Rotate your entire right leg out. Angle your back foot in about 45 degrees. You want the heel of your front foot aligned with the arch of your back foot. Arms extend out into a T position. Inhale, lift up through the crown of your head and exhale, bend into your right knee as you start to lower your right thigh towards parallel with the ground into Virabhadrasana two, warrior two pose. Inhale, lengthen up through all four sides of your torso. Exhale, bend deeper into your right knee. Inhale, 
and exhale. And then bend your right elbow, lower your right forearm on top of your right thigh. Left arm floats up to the ceiling. You're in a modified Parsvo Konasana. And then rotate your top hand and arm towards the front of the room. Couple more cycles of breath. And then inhale, torso comes back up, arms float back out to that T position, and then straighten your right leg, angle your right toes in, parallel to your left toes, hands back on your hips. Good job. And inhale, lengthen up through your torso, and exhale, fold forward. Let's take another Prasarita Padottanasana A. Release your hands onto the floor. Walk your hands back. And there's a wonderful yoga teacher named Janet Arnold Gritch who says the following about awe. Awe holds a feeling of vastness and it is bigger than our understanding of the world. There is almost a magical quality to it that shifts us from focusing on our small selves to embracing, if only for a time, a broader concentration. So here we have the Jewish and the Yogish in total alignment with each other. This opportunity to channel Yura into seeing the vastness, the greatness, the openness. Hands float up to your hips, lift your torso up. Let's take Virabhadrasana two and Parsvo Konasana on your second side. Turn your entire left leg out, angle your back foot in 45 degrees. Extend your arms out into a T position and then Bend into your left knee, drop your left thigh towards parallel to the ground. Inhale, reach up through the crown of your head. Exhale, bend deeper. I'm gonna do that one more time. Inhale, lengthen through all four sides of your torso. And exhale as your left thigh drops down. Bend your Left elbow, lower your left forearm on top of your left thigh. Right arm floats up towards the ceiling. Modify Parsvo Konasana. And then rotate your entire right arm and hand towards the front of the room. Root evenly into both feet. That's your foundation. Draw your left thigh left hip, excuse me, your left hip back. One more inhale. And then exhale, torso lifts up, arms come back out into that T position, straighten your right leg, hands on your hips, turn your left foot in to be parallel with your right foot, and then step your feet together. Great job. We are moving right along. Want to make sure to preserve time for a very luxurious Shavasana and restorative pose before that. So step your feet hip width apart. We're going to come into Vrikshasana, a balanced pose, a pose that I think certainly can encompass both dimensions of Yura, the fear of toppling over with the wonder and the awe of finding stability. Shift the weight of your body into your left foot. Draw your right knee into your chest. Take your right hand on your right knee. Rotate your right knee out to the right side of the room. Reach down for your right ankle. Plant your right foot on the inner part of your left thigh. Make a vacuum seal. So Press back into your right foot. Return your hands to your hips. Center your hips. 
as you simultaneously open up your right knee to the right side of the room. Pick a point on which to settle your gaze that will help you with stability. The modifications are to have your foot on your shin or your toes on the ground and your heel just above your ankle. So you decide what version of the pose you're taking. If you're ready to move on, hands press together in the center of your chest. And then inhale to float your arms up. I think this is the true definition of a Yura pose. Fear and awe rolled into one. One more inhale. Exhale, arms float down onto your hips, draw your right knee back into your chest and step your right foot down. Shake it off. Thank you, Taylor Swift. Steady yourself, shift the weight of your body this time into your right foot, draw your left knee into your chest, left hand on left knee as you rotate your left knee out. Grab onto your left ankle, press your left foot into your right thigh, your right thigh back into your left foot, hands return to your waist. And remember, that moment at the end of life, you're gonna be asked, why weren't you more like you? So stay true to yourself. If this version of the pose is out of reach, take a modification. So keep your hips centered as you open up your left knee to the left side of the room. When you feel a sense of stability, press your hands together in the center of your chest, pick a point on which to settle your gaze, and then inhale, float your arms up. And with your next exhale, arms come down, left knee comes into your chest and step your left foot down. One more time to shake it off. Great job. Stand in Tadasana at the top of your mat. We have one more mini sequence before we hit our peak pose. Step your feet together, hands on your hips. Inhale, step your left leg back, angle your left foot 45 degrees so that your left toes are turned up towards the top left corner of your mat. You want your feet in heel to heel alignment. So don't stand on a tightrope. You might need to heel toe your, your right foot out towards the right side of the mat. With your hips, try to center your hips forward. And then inhale, lengthen up through your torso and exhale, bend into your right knee. Float your arms up. Find yourself in Virabhadrasana one, warrior one pose. So your back foot is rooted evenly into the ground. You're dropping your right thigh down towards parallel with the ground. One more inhale, exhale, straighten your right leg, lower your arms down, interlace your fingers behind you, flatten your palms, inhale, lift your torso and chest up, and then exhale, fold over your right leg. Parsvo Tonasana. Knuckles float up towards the ceiling, Two more cycles of breath. Shift your right hip back, your left hip forward. And then inhale, torso lifts up. Release the interlace of your fingers, hands onto your hips, and step your left foot forward. 
Find yourself back in Tadasana. Good job. Pause for a moment in Tadasana. And let's take our second side. Inhale, step your right leg back, angle your right foot in 45 degrees so that your toes are pointing up to the right corner of your mat. With your hands on your hips, rotate your hips towards the center. And then inhale, lift your heart and chest up. Exhale, bend into your left knee. Drop your left thigh towards parallel with the ground. Release your hands, arms float up. Find yourself in Virabhadrasana one. Root firmly into that back foot. Two more cycles of breath. And then with your next exhale, hands float down, interlace your fingers behind you, flatten your palms, reach your knuckles back and down, straighten your left leg, and then fold your torso over your left leg. Parsvo Tonasana. Knuckles float up towards the ceiling. Two more cycles of breath. And then inhale, torso lifts up, release the interlace of your fingers, hands on your hips, and step your right foot forward. Good job. So I wanna suggest that you have your folding chair ready. We're about to come into our peak pose. Open your folding chair up um, with the seat pointing towards the front of the room. The back of the chair is close to the top of the mat. So take a moment to get settled and then come back to stand in Tadasana, in mountain pose. And I want to share one final thought before we come into our peak pose from Musar scholar Alan Marinus, who shares that our teachers have long recognized that despite the most dramatic awakenings that can penetrate our hearts, left to our own devices, Sooner or later, we drift off to sleep once more. In a matter of time, we stop seeing afresh and so lose contact with the awe state of Yura. What I appreciate about this idea from Alan Marinus is that we need to constantly work on our soul trait of Yura. Yura is not a once in a lifetime thing. It's also not a state of mind that once you enter, you're always there. We're constantly dancing this tango in and out, in and out of the state of, of awe and wonder. But it takes effort, it takes intention to move into that state from time to time. So we're gonna come into our peak pose and my challenge to you is how can you see beyond yourself in this pose? How can you take in a blessing of the world. This pose might come with a little bit of fear, but how can you push past that, calm your mind, open your eyes to discover the wonder. And our peak pose for today is Virabhadrasana 3, Warrior 3. So I'm gonna demonstrate it. You can come in and out of it with me, or you can watch. We're gonna come into it by way of crescent pose. So I'm going to start with my hands on my hips. I'm going to step my right leg back and lower my left thigh down as I bend into my left knee into crescent pose. I'm going to inhale to lift my arms up. And then I'm going to start to lower my torso down towards my left thigh. I'm going to lengthen all four sides of my torso to reach my arms forward so that my fingertips can float onto the back of the chair. My gaze is down. And with my back foot, I'm going to spring up and push my chair forward into a modified version of Warrior Three. 
bringing together so many of the component parts that we've worked on. I'm rooting firmly down into my left foot, lengthening up for my left leg, reaching my right leg towards the back of the room, stamping my right foot onto the wall in back of me. Gonna lower my right hip down and breathe. And then to come out of it, I'm gonna bend into my left knee and I'm gonna step my right foot back, lift my torso up and then step my right foot forward. The chair is there as a prop. If you don't need the chair, you don't need to use the chair and experiment with this. Be forgiving with yourself, be patient with yourself. Trust the order of the sequence. This is the culminating class, everyone, where we're bringing all of these soul traits together. And you're practicing loving kindness for yourself. So starting in Tadasana, hands on your hips. Inhale, step your right foot back, come onto your right toes, bend into your left knee. Inhale, reach your arms up, and perhaps this is where you're at today, which would be totally fine. F find your ah, find the ah in this. If you're moving on, you're lowering your torso down towards your thigh, stretching your arms forward till your fingertips find the back of the chair, using your right foot as a spring, Bringing up and pushing your chair forward, rooting down through your right foot, lifting up through, excuse me, through your left foot, lift up through your left kneecap, stretch your right leg back, stamp your right foot on the wall in back of you. Inhale and exhale. One more inhale and exhale, bend into your left knee, step your right foot back, lift your torso and arms up, and then step your right foot forward. Excellent, excellent job. Second side. So reset your chair if you're using that as a prop. Hands on your hips. Let's take one deep breath in and let it out. And then shift the weight of your body into your right foot, step your left foot back, bend into your right knee, lower your right thigh to be parallel with the ground. Inhale, arms float up, lengthen through all four sides of your torso, and then start to Lower your torso down. Place your hands onto the back of that chair. This time, use your left foot to spring up and to push your chair forward into a modified version of warrior three. Root down through your right foot. And go, go, gadget, left leg towards the back of the room. Spin your inner left thigh up towards the ceiling. One more inhale. And exhale. This time, just lower your left foot to be parallel with your right foot. Hands float back to your hips and lift your torso up. Excellent job. We've had a couple of Yura poses throughout our practice. You can fold your chair, just put it back out of the way, and then come to take a seat on your mat and immediately press the soles of your feet together. Knees are bent and falling towards either side of the room. You're in Baddha Konasana. Take your hands on your feet, open your soles up. Inhale, lengthen through all four sides of your torso and exhale, lower your torso down to meet your feet. 
Going to be here for just a couple cycles of breath. And then inhale, lift your torso up. And if you have the props that I suggested at the start of the class, take your blocks or books, stack them one in back of the other towards the back of your mat a long way. Voila. Grab onto your pillow. Make this what I like to call a pillow tower. And then sit with your left hip right up against the edge of this tower and stack your knees one on top of the other and turn your torso so that it, it is above this pillow tower. Press your palms down into the ground, bend your elbows, and lower your torso, your belly onto the block tower. And then stretch your arms forward and turn your gaze to the opposite side of the room from your knees. And if you have your blocks or books, wonderful. If not, you can just stack two pillows on top of each other. There are a lot of different ways to come into this pose. This is a restorative twist. I had the blessing, the opportunity to learn a little bit about restorative yoga from an amazing teacher named Jillian Pransky, a teacher that I know I share in common with Susan, who's in our class. Take another inhale and exhale. And then walk your hands back in towards your hips. Push your hands into the ground to lift your torso up. And then swivel around to the other side. So this time you want your right hips just at the bottom of your block pillow tower. Stack your knees one on top of the other. And then again, press your hands down into the ground on either side of your pillow tower. Walk your hands forward as you lower your torso and belly onto the block tower. And this time, turn your head the opposite way. So your head and your gaze is facing away from the direction of your knees. Take another couple cycles of breath. And start to walk your hands back in. Press your palms into the ground. Lift your torso up. And two options for how you can end. You can come into a traditional Shavasana, push your blocks and your pillows to the side, 
And just as we started, lay down on your back with your legs extended forward, your arms alongside your torso, palms facing up and ankles roll open. That is always an option. Option number two is to add a chest opener to your closing Shavasana, lay down on your block tower, then extend your legs forward, arms alongside your torso and let your ankles roll open. So pick the version of Shavasana that serves you best. and just return your mind to a state of silence. Start to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. Bring a little bit of life back into your body. Draw your knees into your chest and roll onto the right side of your torso. Push yourself up into a seated position. Hands on top of your knees, palms facing up. And I wanna share with you just the first opening lines of a poem by William Blake. I think wonderfully captures this idea of Yira as ah, and also helps to put a lovely seal and bow and ribbon on this Musar practice. And Blake says, to see a world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wildflower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. I'll share it again. To see a world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wild flower, to hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. Press the palms of your hands together in the center of your chest. I think these words are just a reminder of our ability to constantly pivot in life, to make choices that serve us well, and that enable us to step off of our mats, out of our houses. God willing, we have reached that point in this long, long road together. To do that with grace and intention, with curiosity and with openness to awe. Inhale through your nose. Exhale, lower your chin to your chest. Thank you so much. Namaste and Shabbat Shalom.